Okay, Peter, well, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the upcoming Dubois Joyce fight, which now looks like it is going to happen in October. Um, and the reason I wanted to talk about it is I've been looking, as we've got closer and closer to this fight, the bookies' opinions have moved. We started off with a 50-50 fight. And now most of the bookies are installing Dubois as a three to one favorite. And I think that's a bad call. Um, you know, I can't really understand where they're getting this from, but I think there's a narrative that's going on and a narrative that people are buying into that Dubois is kind of the anointed one, the coming power in boxing. He's going to be the champ um, when Fury and Joshua step aside or when they finish their reigns. And uh, there's almost nothing that can stop him. And, and so, you know, it's almost like uh, Joyce is just seen as another one of these people that these contenders just sort of chew up and spit out. And I don't think that's the case. I think, you know, to make my case for that not being the case, I think we need to go back a little bit and look at their respective careers so far and how they got to this point. And I think an interesting point as well is a reason people are buying into this narrative and maybe the bookies is when you've got a 22 year old, a 23 year old, sorry, with Dubois, banger, up and comer, walking through everyone. And then you've got a 34 year old guy like Joyce, you think, you think of maybe a more seasoned campaigner. It's generally the older guy is on the way down, the younger guy is on the way up, and they pair them up to give the younger guy a bit of experience. I don't think, again, that, that can be written into this scenario in any way. And let's just go back and look at their respective careers. So Joe Joyce was a late starter in boxing. He only started boxing at 22, believe it or not. Um, he was a bit of a track and field guy. He got some injuries and he, then he walked into Earlsfield ABC when he was 22 years old. And they were like, wow, we've really got something here, you know, a real athletic specimen. And then he was very quickly um, brought into the, the GB setup. You know, he went on to have a stellar amateur career. Um, you know, in 2013, he, uh, he, he got a, a bronze medal at the Europeans. Then he went on to get Commonwealth gold in 2014. Uh, the Europeans, again, he got gold in 2015. And he capped his amateur career off in 2016 at, at, at Rio with that silver in the heavyweight division. Now, I think he was very unlucky to get silver. And I think, you know, I, I can't understand how the judges saw that fight going for his French opponent. I think he should have had gold. But anyway, he came back signed with Haymaker, turned pro, and he's had a solid run, a solid run through the pros. You know, he was matched with Ian Lewington in his first fight, who I think was something like 22 and three, you know, good solid pro. So they didn't start him off with uh, the sort of bum of the month club. They started him off, you know, with really sort of some hard guys. And it's been like that all the way through his pro career. I mean, for example, in, in uh, Bernie Steverine, he fought in his ninth pro fight. Steverine was actually apparently quite insulted by this, that they would get a novice to fight him. Bearing in mind, Steverine, as we know, was the, um, yeah, ex-WBC heavyweight champion, you know, who lost to Deontay Wilder. So, uh, but he did beat Steve Reed. He beat Steve Reed in his ninth fight. Uh, that was a TKO round six. And then in his 11th fight, he fought Bryant Jennings, another another great name. You know, a really good fighter, really solid guy. Uh, and he got past him on a 12-round decision. So, even though he's only had 11 fights, he's had 10 stoppages in those 11 fights. And they've been against solid opposition. So, you've got to pair that with a really solid you know, stellar amateur career with a good solid pro career and good experience. Now he's only done 43 rounds. Interestingly enough, in Dubois' 15 fights, he's done 43 rounds as well. So Dubois walked through people a little bit earlier. He's only been taking the distance once as well. So out of those 15 fights, Dubois had 14 early stoppages. Um, and his only, his only um, distance fight was against Kevin Johnson. Again, a very experienced American pro, kind of gatekeeper heavyweight. But his Dubois' best fight, best win was probably against Nathan Gorman, who was 16 and 0 at the time, and that was for the British title. So that was a good guy who came to win, and Dubois was, you know, it was too much for him, and got him out of there in, in, in the sixth, I think. But out that good domestic level opposition, and I think um, Joyce is more for, you know, on the obviously on the international stage in his, in his stellar amateur career, and on the WSB in the amateurs as well, and. You know, I just think Dubois has been a bit more domestic. So you've got to line up their, their respective uh, records. But also, if we look a bit closer at Dubois, and Dubois took the more conventional route. He started boxing at nine years old. Um, but the amateurs weren't really a massive thing. He had a couple of national titles, I believe, as a junior. He had a handful of senior bouts and then went pro at 20. Um, and then, you know, because that, that, that was always their mindset, really, was to take him pro. And then his march through the pro ranks, I think, although he's had more fights than Joyce, I don't think he's faced, as I said, that higher level of opposition. So now they're coming into clash together. And, you know, also, I don't see Joyce as the older man at 34, because bearing in mind that he only started boxing at 22. You know, so he's still fairly physically fresh in that sense, I think. Um, and it's going to be very interesting, this fight, when they actually clash, because I think what's going to happen, I mean, Dubois has got this amazing power. So in a way, you're going to favour Dubois to go out there, assert himself, get behind that improving jab of his and bring in that right hand, that devastating right hand, which has seen him walk through so many people. But Joyce is a very canny operator. You know, I mean, the best way to negate that power is just not to get hit by it. 
And I think Joyce can manage that for quite a while. And he's probably going to want to drag Dubois into deeper water. Because later in the fight, I think these are the places that Joyce has been and Dubois maybe hasn't. And what's going to happen if Dubois does hit Joyce and it doesn't go anywhere because he's a very durable guy. And also he's going to be hitting him back, which a lot of people haven't done to Dubois so far. Because, you know, a bit like George Foreman in his early reign, you're so scared about those, those thunderous punches coming at you. You spend a lot of time just covering up and not throwing back. So, but, you know, Joyce is definitely going to hit him back. And also, as I was saying, I don't see Joyce's on the slide with this. Dubois coming up, Dubois seen as the sort of anointed one, Dubois seen as the next champ, all that sort of stuff. I think this is going to kind of annoy Joyce because I think Joyce has never really got the recognition that he deserved. He was eclipsed slightly in the amateurs by Joshua. He didn't get that 2012 place because of Joshua. You know, coming into the pros, he hasn't had the... The, the really sort of stellar ride again that Joshua had. And he's been eclipsed by this great heavyweight era that we've got. You know, I mean, if we had a Joe Joyce, you know, 10, 20 years ago, we'd all be raving about him, you know. But because we, we're so sport for choice in the British heavyweight division at the moment, um, you know, we're like, oh, right, it's Joe Joyce. Oh, he looks quite good. So, you know, I think Joyce, again, is going to see Dubois getting all this attention, getting all these odds over him and think, you know what, I'm going to have a bit of that. I'm going to make a mark here. I'm going to show you who I actually am and what I can actually do. Um, you know, so in a way, it's a bit of a breakout coming out fight for him or coming out opportunity. Um, so I really think that, you know, that there's a lot to play for for both of them in this fight. I know it's Dubois, you know, seen as his, his natural ascension, but I think Joyce is a serious juggernaut in the way. And, uh, and I think he will come very much to win. He will hit Dubois back hard. He will be able to take his shots or negate his power. So I see it as a really 50-50 fight. And also, I think what we've got to think about for both guys, what's on offer. Now, in a way, we've already talked about Dubois is just seen as this is the next stepping stone. And if he's going to challenge Joshua or Fury, or if it seems more likely, because as we talked about last week, the three kings are tied up fighting each other, he's going to come along and is seen to be able to clean up the division after their reign. You know, that's that's his natural progression. Is he going to miss the Fury, um, Joshua, Wilder era, or is he just going to catch on the tail end? And, and, and maybe get a, get a few good wins there. Um, and, then, and then it's Joyce. Does this, does this catapult Joyce up in? And let's, let's, sorry, let's also talk about Dubois if he loses. If he loses, he can rebuild. Definitely rebuild. He's only 23. You know, we may, may say Joyce was a lot better than we thought he was. Maybe it was the wrong time. So he's going to rebuild and come again. That's maybe the not, same opportunity for Joyce to rebuild at his age. So again, we've got to look at that. Maybe be an extra motivation for Joyce. If he really wants it, he's got to take it now. Um, because Joyce definitely wants to knock on that door of a Fury Joshua. He is not waiting around. You know, he wants those fights and, you know, he wants to get in that mix. I mean, it, it conveniently be enough for him, the other leading contender in this amazing crop of British heavyweights we've got, Dylan White has kind of been sidelined now into his rematch with Povetkin, although he was knocking on the door. So again, maybe that's an opportunity for Joyce to come through now. You know, if he can beat Dubois, he can be the leading guy saying, come on, you know, I mean, give me a, give me a shot, um, you know, against those old amateur rivals or those old amateur teammates. So I think there's a lot to play for, for both guys. But I think particularly for Joyce, you know, he almost he's got a great opportunity to go somewhere. If he wins, he's going to be in a bit of a cul-de-sac if he loses. So I really think that's extra motivation. Another reason I'm saying this is a great fight, a great 50-50 fight with two very motivated guys. And unlike the bookies, I think I'm going to say... The experience that Joyce has that people aren't really looking at, the motivation that Joyce has that people aren't really looking at. Dubois, although he's great and he's powerful and he's young and he's, he's going to be champ one day, on this occasion, I'm going to disagree with the bookies. And I'm going to go down to bookies and take some of their money because they're saying three to one. I think it's a great price. So I'll have that from you. And I'm going to, I'm going to lean towards Joyce in the later rounds. I think that's where it becomes his fight. Joyce on points or Joyce after round nine.